All my life, I've always tried to be satisfied, to feel like I can rest. Something being aspirational to the point that it's kind of impossible to actually accomplish, which is how I feel about poetry. Really impossible to accomplish, and so you're constantly trying to get better in this sort of absurd way, because you'll never reach perfection. Where is the satisfaction in this aspiration <laughs> you were talking about? Yeah, well, it's funny that I talked about how I just want to be satisfied. Um, the satisfaction is extremely fleeting. Um, I think the satisfaction comes when you, just the moments when you finish a piece that has surprised you and done something that like maybe you have been trying to do. I like how I switched to the second person um, because I can't possibly talk about that for myself because it's so intimate. It feels like a very intimate moment when you fi when I finally do something that I've been trying to do for years, you know, and I've had those feelings maybe like, five times, you know, like, feel like I've written a new kind of poem, a new kind of, a new kind of thing that reconciles a number of things that I've been confused about, or that I felt were um, impossible to resolve. And the thing I've been sort of working on the last few years has been trying to understand how philosophical claims can fit into a poem. So when I've managed to make a poem that I feel like is beautiful, is thought provoking, it reconciles all the confusion that I sort of live with for a moment, that's when I feel satisfied. It's so intense that you can remember that yeah. at that moment. You're right. It's, I remember those moments, but it's a bizarre kind of memory. Because it's not like I remember doing anything but sitting in a place. But I'm working on something that I feel like I'm not totally there. You know, it feels almost like, like working on a mathematical theorem, I imagine, feels a similar way. Like, my brother's a mathematician. And, you know, he'll be, like, getting coffee, walking around. But if he's really working on something, he's sort of not anywhere. It's an interesting feeling to just be totally divorced from what's around you. <laughs> Do you have a ritual to start writing every day? I used to have maybe more rituals, but now I think my process is really waiting until I am just, until I cannot do anything else. Um, although maybe that's, I'm going to backtrack. I think my process has changed a lot with doing more philosophy. And, yeah, I, I guess the answer would be no, I don't have a ritual. Because it just, it changes depending on kind of my state of mind. I read until I cannot possibly read anymore. Like, I'll be looking at a page and reading the same sentence over and over, and that's an indication that it's time to write because I'm, I'm full or something, you know? You're looking for the starting point. Yeah. What is the starting point for you? It's a really good question. I think it's, it's become usually something that feels impossible to articulate in conversation. So that's one frustration that would drive me to try to articulate it some other way. Um, it's also something that feels irreconcilable, like a number of different ideas that feel like contradicting each other. And I need to figure out how they relate. And so usually the poem is, is how I try to figure that out. Because my hope is that maybe someone who has similar questions will be able to understand that result.
or someone who maybe never had that particular question would start thinking about that question. Do you like silence? Yes. So much. And sometimes the pursuit of silence becomes a kind of obsession. I love silence. Yeah. I remember there was one Thanksgiving here where I was living in a studio apartment in New York and I decided not to go home because I don't care about Thanksgiving. And I remember this day where, you know, I did not see anyone. I walked around the neighborhood. I had the day off from work, you know. And finally around like 9 p.m. and like everyone, I could even see into like windows across the street, like everyone was like with their families, with people they knew, you know. And I was like, this is silence. Like this is boredom. This is like the emptiness, you know. And I could, I was just like, I have to just like be in the emptiness and feel that, you know, because like how often do you actually have that where everyone is away you know it wasn't pleasant but I think that's what poetry kind of is it's like you're face to face with that kind of threshold what kind of threshold the possibility that the possibility of emptiness you know the possibility that nothing has like a intrinsic meaning you know it's just possibility that everything is kind of custom, you know, and, and routine, you know, and then when you break that, you feel how arbitrary that can be. When encountering kind of that empty, you break from routines, customs, societal norms, you know, ideas of what a poem is, which I think is really important, ideas of what a poem is, ideas of what art is, what entertainment is. I think you have to, like, really just, like, scrap all that and build something for yourself. Then you can play. You know, you can be absurd. You can try things. You can invent things, you know, to fill that kind of emptiness that you get to. You know, there are times when I'm trying to write a poem and I'm like, I know that I'm just trying to write a poem because that's how I think of myself. Like, oh, I'm thinking of myself as someone who writes poems. And then the poem is shit because I'm like too aware of, oh, I'm gonna write a poem and it's gonna sound like one of my poems that I've done. But that's not really inventing, that's just mimicking. That's just like going through the motions of something I've already done. So I think, the reason I let I write less and less now is because I only want that moment of breaking free from what I've already built, you know? Yeah. I don't want to just do it to call myself a writer. I want to really try to do something new. Is it easy for you to say, okay, that poem is finished? Yeah. I think at this point, I know when something isn't working, I do, yeah, I know when it's finished. It's, I can't explain it. What do you feel when something's wrong in the poem? It almost feels like um, having an argument with someone who is accusing you of saying something you didn't mean. That's what it feels like. And you're trying to clarify what you meant, you know? So it really feels like that with the poem. No. That's not what I was saying, <laughs> like, but what was I saying? Yeah, that's what it feels like. What makes that things hold together in a poem for you? That's a good question. I think for me, it used to be more musical. Like it used to be, I, I used to be really, really fond of repeating certain phrases, you know, and it wasn't part of a, particular form, but kind of a, a very loose ballad in a way, um, where you know there's sort of like a chorus almost that comes back. And so I think for a while I was really obsessed with that because you know when you need to hear that sound again, and then you sort of know when you've said it for the last time. 
you know when it's gone on too long, and so you cut it. It's, it is more like a song. Now I think I know when something's complete, when it's more based on the content, like the, the idea. So I know when it's working for me as if I, the reader, but I don't know what it's like not to be me. I mean, I try. <laughs> That's the last stage of the interview. Yeah. I'm going to leave the space. Okay. You're going to keep the microphone for okay. five, six minutes. Okay. And you are going to add whatever you want. Oh, my God. This is hard because I used to think aloud a lot. Um, but that was when I lived alone. So that was years ago. And what would I say? This is the pressure of silence. I almost feel like I'm doing stand-up comedy to an empty room. And I'm surrounded by books, but it doesn't feel appropriate to open one and start reading it because that's, that's escaping from being just myself and the microphone. And someone's honking outside. I think writers become writers because they never know what to say in the moment. And you want to create some perfect thing that you don't have to uh, do anything on the cuff anymore. But someone can just open up whatever you've written and understand that that might have been what you meant. But you didn't actually have to say it out loud. And some people say that I'm eloquent, but I n feel constantly afraid that I'm being completely incomprehensible. It is the most terrifying feeling to have this microphone in my hand, because it is the feeling of having nothing, not having nothing to say, but not being able to say what I mean and not knowing who I'm talking to. And that is the feeling of writing, for sure. Maybe it's appropriate to just read a short poem of uh, Trockles. Lament. Sleep and death, the somber eagles, rush all night about this head. May the icy surge of eternity engulf the golden image of man. The crimson body shatters on the horrid reefs and a dark voice weeps above the sea. Sister of a stormy melancholy, look, an anxious vessel sinks beneath the stars, the silent countenance of night.